U.S. panel recommends sanctioning India over religious freedom violations. So the question is, will India be sanctioned for religious freedom violations? Let's dig into it. For the third year, an American panel on international religious affairs accused India and other countries of engaging or tolerating systemic, ongoing, and egregious violations of religious rights. On April 5th, the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, or USRIF for short, released its annual report, which noted that religious freedom in India has, quote, significantly worsened. USRIF recommended imposing, quote, targeted sanctions on individuals and entities directly involved in the violations of religious freedom. The rec recommendation added that barring an individual's entry, it recommended, sorry, the recommendation added barring an individual's entry into the United States. The report states that in 2021, the Indian government, quote, escalated its promotion and enforcement of policies that negatively affect Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Dalits, and other religious minorities. India is, quote, engaging in and tolerating systemic, ongoing, and egregious violations of religious freedom, the committee report said. The list of countries with worsening religious freedom also included China, Iran, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, among others. Wait, those are the list of the ones countries that are bad or worsening? Those are countries that are also on the list of countries okay. as they're classified as a CPC or country of particular concern. Okay, okay, okay. Wow, so India is on a list of countries alongside with with iran and saudi arabia yes oh, and how its does that neighbor feel? and its neighbor to the west pakistan how does that feel india how does that feel india to be to be are you not ashamed i mean indian government let me say that okay like would is this not embarrassing are you not embarrassed? Well, it's not the, the first world. time. This is the third year, the third year that they've gotten this designation. And of course, India's Ministry of External Affairs dismissed the committee's findings, calling it biased propaganda and the product of anti-India lobbyists in the United States. Yeah, so I, by the way, being these recommendations doesn't mean necessarily that the sanctions are going to go through or not, right? But at least it's a step. I, I mean, I don't think it will because it's goddamn. In, it's like India. India is like the <laughs> the huge country with a lot of uh, with a major economy, right? Like people were talking about how hard it is to, you know, sanction Russia. I think okay. So let's see, India GDP total GDP is well, my internet. What is, why is it not showing? All right, I think. Hold on, let me do it on my phone. For some reason, my computer is just not working so i think like what what kind of sanctions oh here two trillion 2.6 trillion dollars in gdp and russia what kind of sanctions that we're talking about oh yeah and russia is 1.4 trillion so india is like almost like getting close to twice as big of as big as russia right an economy like you can't just like but the economy as big as india you can't just be like but what kind of sanctions we were talking about like is this individual sanctions or like just so here's the thing the, this whole talk of sanctions caused a lot of attention in indian media it, it was like on the top of the headlines like everyone was like oh my god the us is going to sanction india blah blah, blah. no way There's no i want to talk about like i want to unpack this a little bit one we need to really dissect who is recommending these sanctions. So the United States Committee on International Religious Freedom is a nonpartisan branch of the State Department. This is a branch or panel on the State Department that simply makes re recommendations to policyholders, to legislators, right? They have no ability to actually create and enforce any any mechanisms any laws any any direct um uh, bilateral relationship uh, uh directives at all they simply are making recommendations to the people with the power to do so um so it was kind of funny to see people freaking out about these sanctions because i'm like this is just one panel that has literally no power at all to exert right. these 
they're just saying, hey, this is one thing we recommend. Um, and that was one piece of the recommendations. So I actually found the report. I wait, let me share my screen and we can we can look at this together. Yeah. So but before you read this, uh, Forever Stormy is like, you know, let me read this Forever Stormy in the live chat in this Twitch live chat, by the way, follow us on Twitch is saying it's not even a major sanctions, just ban some of them from entering the US. It would be symbolic, but it will wake people up. I mean, even and it, it's not even a ban of some people for some people entering US. It's a recommendation on banning some people from entering the US. And, ev and even the recommendation enough is newsworthy enough to, for people to be like, God damn it, India, what the hell, right? Like, this is like embarrassing. Like, this is the world's largest secular democracy, and it's finding itself on a list with Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. Like, it should wake people up that things like, because people don't trust, um, people might not trust, like, um, secular activists because they, mm. they might be biased so you if you have a you know organization like this with the re annual report you know some an organization which has a standing for making objective reports like this that will help put that out there i mean it will it will it will be a good reference for a lot of people like when people talk about india um if you have documents like this out there it could always be used as a reference you know, to, for people to know that we're speaking objectively about these facts. These are not just stories that we just anecdotal evidence that we just uh, biasly highlighting. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the that's a utility of the report like this. But go on. Yeah, I mean, there was there's so much to unpack. So um, here is the report. Wait, let me make this bigger for everyone. Can you see this better now? OK. So I read the report today, or at least the sections pertaining to India and Iran. Um, and it talks, it, it, it has the key findings. So it talks about, okay, so we're, you know, they, they accuse the Indian government of allowing, you know, all this, um, the, the Hindu, they explicitly say a Hindu nationalist agenda that neg negatively affects all these religious minorities. And then they give examples. So a big one is the, um, the misuse and overuse of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act or UAPA in the Sedition Law, which is notorious for um, uh, abuse against journalists in particular. Um, also the death and detention of Father Stan Swami, which was a huge deal, who was a Jesuit priest who was like a, um, a tribal rights activist. And then it also talks about um, the issues in Kashmir and then it goes into not only how do you remember when the missionaries of charity got their um their right to operate within the country revoked there was all this drama about all these charities that got their Christian oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 so yes, they talk yes. about that and how even oxfam india were um not renewed after under you know that special clause and then afterwards um the missionaries of charity were and then also um what they also have a large portion of this t talking about the issue of the anti-conversion laws which we talk about a lot on this channel so the p report goes into all these issues that prevent people from um uh converting to a different religion if they're hindu in particular how they're essentially criminalizing interfaith marriages and um also just how like government officials openly demonize people of other um religious minorities and then so they go into the specific recommendations and one of them is to um use the so well here's my position let me back up for a second my position is that we are not going to sanction india we mean in the united states not not me and armin <laughs> Um, I have no power to sanction anyone. Um, I don't think the United States is going to sanction India at all um, for a number of reasons. One, we need them in our relationship to counter China way too much. We need them way too much. We yeah, already they're part give, of the quad, right? Yes, exactly. We already give India special treatment in regards to them buying Russian arms. There's like this whole kerfuffle over, I think it's the S-300. Um, 
where everyone else gets sanctioned outright for having this from the Russians, but India, like we're digging our heels in and like trying to not go in that direction, even though it's just like blatantly blatant hypocrisy. Um, and the fact that India is openly playing both sides in terms of the U S and Russia. Um, and we just, we just need them to counter China way too badly. Uh, so for example, the report recommends actually using the quad, um, which is set up ostensibly to help counter China as a means to try to affect India's behavior. Um, yeah. And then they, they go into a lot of other background, but I think that's the main part that I wanted to get into. Yeah. So for people who don't know the, the quad is a strategic alliance between Australia, United States, Japan and India, and it's kind of like a NATO wannabe. I mean, it's not even remotely close to being a NATO, but it could potentially, like, potentially could move in that direction. But just like NATO was initially started um, for resistance against the Soviet Union, the uh, the Quad is also somewhat being seen as some small, much much smaller attempt as a. a union of countries to resist um, China, which is a good thing. Uh, I mean, the CCP at least, right? And I'm hoping like, hoping the quad thing works, right? So we, this is why we, people think like, people in the live chat sometimes think that we're anti-India. We want India to work, <laughs> okay? We want India to prosper because we think India, India has a potential of being an actual real secular democracy. And it would be a great addition to the forces in the world that stand against tyranny. You know what I mean? If India had better human rights record and freedom of speech and, you know, democracy and secularism and all of that and all the values that makes standing up against tyranny, um, you know, more effective, like makes your, makes your country part of the force that stands up against values that um bring us back to pre-world war one era and where human human rights and are, are not respected you know so if if india could pass that phase it would be a great addition to these countries that stand up against you know countries like t tyrannies like the ccp and it, this is why it's so valuable that india is part of the quad right but so this is why we we are rooting for India for India to to prosper and eventually hopefully get there. But like it, this is very interesting because like like in the live chat the people somebody saying nothing going to happen to India only you people and Indian Muslims will be crying over the mere existence of Hindu. I mean the, I have the no thing... problem with the existence of Hindus. I I love that. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't know what you're saying. So like first of all you don't understand that we are we we are cheerleaders of India. We want India to, uh, we are we 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 want India to prosper. One, second of all, the fact that you're talking about Indian Muslims as separate from India, like oh nothing, you're you're cheering India um, against the wishes, like you, you think that's against the wishes of Indian Muslims. So that's not good for you. Like you think you're a supporter of India, but when you otherize a huge section of Indians as Indian Muslims and you kind of treat them like they're the enemies of India, like your that attitude, that's actually what is standing in the way of India becoming you know more prosperous and more successful, right? Because you're you're dividing the country. You're you're treating your own citizens as if they're the enemy of your country. You know? So it's amazing how so many people think like we're the enemies and they're defending India. And I see it the other way around. I think like you're the enemy of India and we're supporting India. Uh, secular, <laughs> read this one in response to your. What you <laughs> that was secular rude is in hell yeah, it just republic sanctions. Suck it, BJP. <laughs> Yeah. We, you know, the the Indian government has blocked all of our websites. They blocked us on Facebook. People have been taking us to court. Delhi High Court has, you know, not been on our team. 
And we've decided, you know, India taking action against us. We're not having it anymore. We're now fighting back with the Atheist Republic sanctions. I don't know how we, I don't know what an Atheist Republic sanction of India would look like. <laughs> I'm sure they're scared, Susanna. I'm sure. Yes, they would be I shouldn't scared. say that. We're coming. <laughs> the BJP um, is like. We need the recognition of the Atheist Republic. We're not a real country if we're not recognized by the Atheist Republic. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. But... So <laughs> um, Forever Stormy is saying the problem with using a supremacist regime like Modi's to counter China is that you'll end up with two insane countries in Asia instead of just one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know that's a matter of opinion um okay it, it, i have i have more okay so here's the thing i i i still think the foundations okay so we have like a, we have problems with the current ruling party in india okay but india is still has stronger foundations uh put and potential for being a legitimate secular democracy than china like china oh you, is that even a question yeah, what? yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yes. So, so, like, it's. It, I mean, it's it's a different it's a different level. Like, India could, it's a it's a secular democracy being hijacked by people who don't like secular democracy. But China is like not even remotely close to being a secular democracy. But yeah, go. On. It's not oh democ my gosh! It's not I mean, there was at all. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Something else really interesting that happened recently is that Anthony Anthony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State, actually made statements about the human rights abuses in India, which is very rare because of how vital our relationship with India is and how delicate it is, given that India has a very strategic balancing act going on right now, where they're playing both sides. So that gives india a lot of leverage for the us to really play nice and so that's what made this statement really unusual so anthony blinken said um we regularly engage with our indian partners on these shared values of human rights and to that end we are monitoring some recent concerning developments in india including a rise in human rights abuses by some government police and prison officials when he said at a uh, joint press briefing with u.s secretary of defense so and with um india's foreign minister and india's defense minister was there as well and then he didn't elaborate but people really took notice of this this comment and then later that week no a few days earlier ilhan omar u.s representative ilhan omar who's very controversial said quote what does modi need to do to india india's muslim population before we will stop considering them a partner in peace so I thought this was very interesting because it shows that this whole issue is starting to get a lot more attention in kind of the global awareness when over the past few years, I've been really shocked at how there isn't this awareness of what the temperature is like in India right now and how things are really escalating. In fact, there was a U.S. congressman just days ago who was expressing concerns over the issue in Kashmir. Um, where was the quote? A prominent American congressman has expressed concerns over human rights situation in Kashmir and emphasized the U.S. government must make it clear that it expects better of democracies like India. The remarks by uh, Congressman Andy Levin. Um, uh, yeah, basically just saying like we need like he's kind of putting the issue on notice and on watch, um, which I thought was very interesting that this is all happening very quickly. All, a lot of major political figures suddenly starting to comment on this issue. Like, And then this report came out that got a lot of attention in Indian media. Um, I think that there's, I really like that there's starting to be more awareness. Okay, um, so... Oh, there's a few there's live chat questions. So yeah. Oxymoron was correcting me that it wasn't the S300 that India bought, it was the S400. So he's saying, so is buying the S400 bad? You want India to buy subpar USA fad, fad, fad twice the price? Okay, so basically, I don't actually have much of an opinion on India buying weapons from the US or Russia. I was just trying to communicate what happened. In wait, what wait, are you seriously? Wait, are you are we seriously going to talk about USA's subpar weapons after what we've seen how <laughs> Russian weaponry are able to perform? Hasn't the reports from 
recent attacks shown that a lot of uh, like more than anticipated number of malfunctioning like shocking amount of malfunctioning from uh russian weaponry when oh when something were, like 60 percent of their precision missiles like aren't even working like right. is russian weaponry and they been, don't even from, and they don't even have that many precision missiles yeah i mean they can't produce stuff like the americans can and there has been embarrassing like the the the, the performance of russian military equipment have been so embarrassing in this war and it's it has a it has made so many people who actually buy Russian weaponry reconsider. Like even India is like, um, maybe we shouldn't be buying from these people. They, their their stuff doesn't work like the, the like the Americans do. And a lot of people, you know, part of it is also I, just personnel qualifications as well, though. Just okay, ineptitude. Okay. So so they can't use their own web. Like the Russians can't know the personnel don't have enough training to use the weapons that Russia makes itself. It's I watched a video about how there's a huge gap in expertise in Russia's military. Like they have a lot of conscripts, so they have a lot of cadets and then they have a lot of gen or very well qualified generals, but they don't have a lot of sergeants. And there's this middle gap of well qualified and technically capable sergeants because the hazing culture is so bad in the Russian military that people basically self delete before they can get to that level that's how bad things are in the culture okay, of the we think self we think self defeat because the actual word for it is something that youtube is sensitive about i mean i'm yeah, sure and so, right, and so okay, there is, the there's a lack of capability because of this huge gap yeah i'm sure russia produces some really good you know um weapons okay there's some of them that are probably amazing but i'm just saying that there's a reason why people pay a higher price for the American ones. <laughs> it's okay. Like it's must they're they're I mean they're per, they're better. I mean, let's be honest, they're better. Okay. They are well, okay. They're regardless of the the quality of the weapons, personally, and this is not something I'm very knowledgeable about or well versed in. So what? it's not a position I'm married to, but the idea of sanctioning someone just because you bought something from someone that you don't like seems weird to me. That seems weird. Like, so I'm not taking a position on the the merits of sanctioning potentially sanctioning india over buying the s400 because i think that's i think that's weird but it's not something oh yeah there might be more there might be more to it but on its face i'm like i don't like that kind of action against a country that just seems like trying to establish no. like dominance and hegemony of your own military oh military yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Complex. I, 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 I'm like no please... screw that india should be able to buy who from whoever they want to like yes 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 that's completely true that's completely true i wasn't commenting on that you're completely right about that however if you let me finish one of my one of my points maybe susanna okay because you're not letting me finish a, a single sentence um I don't even know what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, I was saying that Russia is very effect ineffective at producing producing anything uh, because because you know a lot of the reports that shows how Russia how Russia is really good at pro, you know at military and weaponry and stuff like that is kind of like you you have to be skeptical about that because they are actually report American you know Pentagon reports which it's it is within their interest. I mean. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but I'm just saying be skeptical about it because it is it is within uh, Pentagon's interest to sh to to show the enemy to be strong, right? Because it will justify f their funding. Um, but the but everything in practice shows that they are not as good as what the reports have been indicating, and w what is what is interesting is that this is to be expected because. The way that R Russia produces its weaponry is top-down command economics, right? So, as much as it's, you know, it's not a communist country anymore, but it's still the top-down level. Like, you know, how much we criticize uh, the privatization and the, of the military industry in the United States, and how it's become a money-making machine, and that's dangerous and stuff. Well, apparently, the money-making machine is the reason why America produces better weapons because, because we there are steep competition and so we get the best expertise 
Exactly, because of the compet because of the competition element, right? When you have a top down command economy, when Putin, when you know, when the government is like has so much influence over who produces what weapons instead of just letting people uh, private organizations compete for the bid that the government is making this is what you get this is you know top down uh, command economy always produces subpar uh, results anyways let's move on to other start let's do this other start question so we could go no, to the i just one. want to do uh, this one starred comment oxymoron is saying india said it monitors usa's human rights violations too good awesome yeah. I love it. Let's yeah, that's more, actually... please. Let's get more light on it. Let's dig into it. Expose me. Expose us all. <laughs> no, yeah, actually, that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you for your service, India. Keep doing that. <laughs> and also, that's pretty badass response. Let me, uh, let's be honest, okay? They're like, we're monitoring your human rights violation. We're like, well, we're monitoring yours. <laughs> I don't know. I've like that's the kind of rhetoric. I I don't think it's necessarily that's like good. such a badass response because Iran uses the same rhetoric. They are saying that they were considering sanctioning the U.S. because of the death of George Floyd, you know, in, right. at the hands of a police officer. And there were lefties who were like, "Oh my God, based Iran, they're gonna sanction U.S. for George Floyd." Okay. And I'm like, "You guys are so cringe. Stop, please stop. Okay, You're falling for the trap." as cringe as that is if it if it works it will it might it might have a positive effect i mean it's cringe everything that the islamic republic of iran does is cringe right oh d is saying thanks india yeah thank you india for making us better you're it's good it's good keep doing that but but you know even if if even if like islamic republic of iran like does that it might and if it works if it if it hurts the united states to be uh, from a foreign policy perspective, then it might motivate them to do less of, you know, to clean up their act. You know what I mean? Like if you if you need to like, oh yeah, they keep pointing at, like we're trying to point out that they are have human rights violations and they keep pointing back the finger at us. Well, maybe, cl maybe clean up your house uh, so that you could be better at pointing other people's human rights violation. You know what I mean? Like it will, I need, I think we need that motivation for uh, American politicians. So that's a that's a good thing. Uh, but I just want to highlight the fact that Qasem says hi, Armin and Durut Suzy, because they, she, Suzy Azizam. Yeah, so okay. he, it's amazing how he knows that he speaks English to me, but Persian to you. That's very. <laughs> so, um, well, so forever, Stormy was saying, I don't think India will reach China level of crazy, but it will probably become like Turkey if it continues in this path. That's actually a, a fair, fair point. That's a fair point. Um, that's a good example. Mm, OK, last one. Uh, you read this one while I get the last news. The next news, sorry, not last. <laughs> I mean, I don't really have anything to say about this comment. It's just like, okay, Kanye Baba <laughs> is saying, why so much hate for Modi? He's the best prime minister we ever got. Do your research before demolishing him. Um, wait, there's this comment by Andrew that I want to address. Andrew is saying, I see that the chair of Yusrif, uh, Nadanin Mazena, was, I don't know how to say that last name, was appointed by Donald Trump and is also the president of Patriot Voices and is closely connected to Patriot Voices founder, Rick Santorum. Well, whatever her political background, all I know is that the head of Yusrif used to follow Atheist Republic on Twitter while we were still on Twitter. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. She would follow us from her personal account. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.